rare adventures of Biggles. The discovery that a submarine is coming to join the Vega at the small island is a blow to Biggles' hopes. Here is the perfect getaway for Zoratov and von Stahlheim with the papers. But immediately a plan forms in his mind. He will drop bombs to keep the submarine away from the Vega and in some way win the papers back from the crooks. Everything depends on the bombs. Biggles with Ginge and Tom Heyman stays on the island while the others go back to Kingston with Colonel Summers. They're on the aerodrome when the colonel brings them shocking news. Because of the political trouble in British Guiana, the Jamaican government will not allow the use of bombs against the submarine. They're jittery. They're frightened that the trouble will spread throughout the Indies. It's most unfortunate that I had to ask the minister at this time. Pity you asked him at all. I'd have gone direct to the RAF squadron. You know, they couldn't have helped you. They're standing by in case they're needed in Guiana. <laughs> Positively very well preposterous, Elbean. Our blokes are alone on that island, and there's a very great sub trundling towards it. I know, I know. And without the bombs, they've no means of keeping the sub away. I'm terribly sorry about this, but there's nothing that can be done. By Jingo, there is. Where does he hang out, this minister of yours? Well, the cabinet's meeting at the moment. Uh, he slipped out to talk to me. Why do you ask? Because I'm going to see him. He's not going to leave Biggles and the blokes to be wiped out. I doubt if he'll see you, Lacey. You want to help us, don't you, sir? Of course I do. Haven't I been right in the thick of it with you? Then even if you can't fix the bombs, fix this for us. I'll see the minister and I'll force him to agree to what we want. And that's the most you'll agree to... Uh, look, man, uh, won't you ask him? Well, put me through and I'll ask him. Uh, oh, I, I say, uh, oh, confound the man, he hung up on me. Sizzling sausages. I'll hang one up on him when I see the blighter. Who are you speaking to? The minister's secretary. He said that he'd give you five minutes if you care to go round, but he flatly refused to put me through to the minister. Is there no other way we can get through? Not while the cabinet meeting is on. Oh, Lacey, I, I can't tell you how sorry Don't I... Don't bother, sir. Jot down this bloke's address, will you? If he's the highest we can see, we'll see him. Are you Mr. Baldwin? Well, uh, yes, yes, and you'll be the fellow Summers was babbling about, I suppose. He wasn't babbling, old sausage. What he had to say was deadly serious. Better leave this to me, Bertie. Listen, I haven't a great deal of time, and I think the Colonel has told me what you want. You're the Minister's personal secretary, aren't you? Yes, yes, that's correct. I suppose he relies on your judgment a good deal. I pride myself, old man, that I run this department for him. But if you think I'm going to speak for you... I well... do... You won't give us the chance to convince the minister, so we'll convince you. And then you'll convince him by Joe. Now, look here. My if good... you haven't much time, you'd better let us talk. We were sent out here by Scotland Yard. I'm not interested in that. I... Under the instructions of the British government. Are you interested in that? Well, I, I didn't know it was quite so important. It is. Up to date, our mission has been secret. But we'll let you into it. We're to take back, or to prevent any other agents taking back, certain papers which were hidden on the island of Inagua. Uh, Summers said something about some other island, uh, a small one. That's where they are now, in a yacht belonging to agents of an unfriendly power. And approaching that island is a submarine belonging to the same power. Do you know why? Well, I, I don't know. I suppose so to rendezvous with a yacht, is it? To take the agents, and what's more important, the documents, back to Europe. The submarine will do that, Mr. Baldwin, unless my friends and I stop it. You haven't mentioned the trouts on the island, old bean. Tell him about Beagle. I think this argument will count more with Mr. Baldwin. Now, look here, old man. I can see a certain sense in what you say. Considerably more than in Summer's cock and bull story about three men going to die. But you're going too far in expecting help from... Too far? Yes. After all, you're, you're agents, aren't you? Little more than spies, really. You take on these jobs because you're equipped to handle them by yourselves, without assistance. Mr. Baldwin, 
Why won't you help us? Because there's a crisis here in the West Indies. Any day there may be a revolution in British Guiana. And we can't afford to concern ourselves with these uh, minor matters while that's likely to happen. British Guiana is hundreds of miles away. If anything happens there, it may spread like a flame throughout the entire islands. And strangely enough, sir, that is important to us. And is a world war important to you? Have you ever heard of guided missiles with atomic heads? Huge bombs that can travel accurately thousands of miles and then wipe entire cities out of existence? What are you talking about? Plans, which by tonight may be stowed aboard a submarine and on their way to Europe. You mean to say that these, these documents are, are plans of guided missiles? We suspect that they are, and so does the British government. If they fall into the wrong hands, they may well cause the start of the next world war. Oh. Oh, I, I see. They will fall into the wrong hands, Mr. Baldwin, unless you help us. I see. Well, I think... Uh... I think perhaps you'd, you'd better tell me again, old man, exactly what it is that you want. It's growing dark, Pickles. Yes, too dark. They should have been back by now. With... Don't work yourself up about it, Ginge. It isn't nightfall yet. It will be in about half an hour, though. Do you really expect them now? I'll continue to expect them until the last moment. And even then, I shan't panic about it. Well, if you think they're coming, we'd better go back, hadn't we? It'll take us half an hour to reach the rendezvous. Tom's there. We're more use up here on the peak. Oh, I wish something would happen. It nearly drives me crazy sitting around all day with nothing to do. We've done a good day's work, Ginge. Our knowledge of this hill may be most useful to us. It's an excellent lookout post, and that big cave behind us is extremely interesting. I'm not in the mood for exploring caves. No need to explore it. It simply falls back into the crest of a hill from a narrow opening. It'd make a splendid hideout if ever we needed one. Then you don't think Algie and Bertie are coming back? I said if. You've had your wish, Ginge. Something's happening at last. The kite? No, the submarine. Take a peek through the glasses. She's coming to the surface. Sees us go, she's close, Biggles. Yes. She'll make the island before morning from there. And we can't stop her. Oh, if only that confounded kite would come. Too late to rely on it now. We'll have to handle this ourselves. But how can we? Not sure yet. There's an idea for me. Ginge, I want you to whip back to Tom and leave a message for Algy. Yes? If he comes during the night, he's to carry out the plan by bombing in front of the sub. It'll be brilliant moonlight, so he should be able to aim quite accurately. Anyway, you don't want him to hit the sub, do you? No. I want him to turn it away from the island. He's to drop a bomb whenever it looks like heading back. That clear? Uh, Roger. But uh, what about us? Tom will stay at the rendezvous. You'll cut across the island to the bay where the Vigo's anchored. I'll be waiting there for you. By that time, I hope to have my plan fully worked out. And you'll join me? Yes. And then somehow, between the two of us, we'll have to work a miracle. Okay, Ginge. Stay where you are. A little of the message? Yes. Tom's spitting chips that he can't be with us. He reckons he can smell some fun. There may be too much fun, but it might work. What's the scheme, Biggles? Unless the plane comes, we can't stop the sub coming in, can we? Not so far as I can see. So the next important thing is to stop it going away with the papers on board. We're going to pinch them from the Vega, are we? Not yet. My brain hasn't come round to that one. But we are going to hold the sub at the island. How? By kidnapping Zolotov. Suffering cats, but... Zolotov must be a pretty big boy back in his own country, or they wouldn't trust him with this job. So the commander of the sub is unlikely to leave the island without him. No, I, sp I suppose not, but, but how can we kidnap him? He's out there on the yacht. We'll bring him ashore. They'll probably all come. But we'll stay hidden in this scrub, and we'll watch for Zolotov. Then we'll trail him and grab him. After that, we'll take him up the cave on the hill. Good scheme, eh? 
It's a risky one, because <laughs> Good schemes off now. Hey, wait a minute. How are we going to bring them ashore? Like this. <laughs> that should intrigue them no end. Now it's just a matter of waiting. A boatload of crooks should come floundering in to investigate before long, or I've underestimated our enemy's curiosity. Can you see him, Biggles? Yes. He's throwing his weight about at the moment. Good. He's spreading them out. But he's staying with one star line, isn't he? No, I don't think so. No, they're splitting up. A bit to the left, Ginge. Move very quietly. Try to get directly in front of him. This'll do. He's coming straight for us. Stand by. Now, grab him, Jin. <laughs> Together, Biggles and Jin's leap on the unsuspecting Zodotov. Will Biggles' daring plan succeed? What will happen when the other crooks hear the disturbance? Don't miss the thrills in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles.